Hello everyone! Today's video is a tutorial on Photoshop for iPad. Photoshop for iPad was released at the beginning of this month, so it's a pretty new app. I recently made a tutorial on Photoshop for iPad, but it was just a surface level introduction since I was at Adobe Max. In this video, I would like to give you a more thorough walkthrough. It was initially said that the Photoshop iPad app was going to have all the functionalities of its desktop counterpart, but it turns out that wasn't the case. The app is capable of making simple composite images and may not be ideal for more complex projects, but what's good about it is that since it's an Adobe app, connecting to other Adobe applications is super easy. The app will cost about $10 per month or around $45 if you're subscribed to the Adobe Create Cloud suit. Before I begin my Photoshop for iPad tutorial, I think it's important that you know of some alternatives to Photoshop. I recommend Pixelmator, RStudio Pro, and lastly Affinity Photo for advanced users. Along with Photoshop, they are some of the best apps for making composite images on your iPad. I suggest using Pixelmator for beginners and Photoshop for those who are Adobe users. RStudio Pro is a bit more complicated, but it's still similar to Photoshop. It is, however, only available in English. Affinity Photo is for advanced users, but you can do so much with it, so if you ever want to try it out, feel free to do so. Now back to the Photoshop tutorial. I'll introduce you to basic functions in Photoshop for the iPad. There are some features that are lacking in this app, but I'll be creating some design work with what I have today. You will be guided through three designs, so stay tuned and watch the entire video. Alright, let's start. First, tap Create a new document button from the bottom left, or use the button labeled Import. Now, import a photo from your camera roll. RGB is the only available color mode in Photoshop for iPad at the moment. CMYK for printing is not available yet, but I have a feeling that will be soon. Now that you've opened a canvas, I'm first going to break down some tools. On the left, there is a toolbar. You can find brushes, erasers, and other tools for coloring or inserting text. On the right, there is a taskbar. Here, you may configure options on the layer panel. You use it when you want to change the order or color of layers. When you want to import a photo, tap the image icon at the bottom left here. Photoshop is an app for making composite images, so you start with importing an image from your camera roll. Once you place your image, you want to cut out the portion with this girl. When cropping, locate the selection tool. It's the third button on the toolbar. Long tap it and you'll then see the lasso tool and magic wand tool. I'm first going to show you the lasso tool. The lasso tool allows you to select certain parts of an image by tracing the selection outline with your Apple Pencil like this. Right next to the lasso tool option, there is this thing called Quick Selection Tool. And this automatically detects the selection outline as you roughly trace around the image with your Apple Pencil. Just like this, continue to select the area roughly, and in case you run over the selection area, there is a touch shortcut option at the bottom left. While holding it, you can trace the unwanted area to delete. To add, trace, and remove, draw around the area in question while pressing the shortcut. For the space between hands, for instance, drag it while holding the touch shortcut to delete. With the current Photoshop, we have no tools to easily blur the image or to cut out a partial part of an image such as her hair. 
These tools are only available in the desktop version of Photoshop, so we have to rely on masks. Once you roughly create a selection area, tap the mask button either at the bottom or on the right to cut out the part of an image. In my case, it will be the girl. As you can see, I feel like the edges aren't entirely smooth. When you want to touch up edges, select the mask layer and grab a brush. When you trace using a white color brush, the selection area starts up here. In contrast, when you trace in black, the mask gets hidden and it basically disappears. So grab a thin black pen to trace the edges of this girl. Alright, like this, I managed to cut out a girl of this image. Now I'm going to place a different background image behind the girl. From the camera roll, choose a picture of your choice. This time I'm going to insert this image of blue sky. Place the background image layer underneath the layer of the girl to have her in front. When I zoom in, I can see that I didn't cleanly cut out the girl. So when this happens, grab a black brush while keeping the mask and trace like so. Regarding the background, it's better to blur it a bit to have a sense of depth. There is this thing called the Gaussian Blur button at the top right, and tap it where it will then show you a slider, so move it towards the right or left to blur as you can see. It's not a good idea to blur too much, and I recommend blurring just a little. Tap thumb button once you're finished. Next, I'm going to adjust the color tone of this girl and the background image, but I want to make this girl a bit more bluish in color. There's a panel called Adjustment Layer where you can adjust color tone here. Tap it and choose Color Balance, and you can move the slider here, but as you may have noticed, this turns the entire canvas bluish. What we want to do here is to only change the color of this girl. So when doing that, select the girl's layer and there is a button that says Add Adjustment, so tap it and select Color Balance. An arrow button will show up. It indicates that color changes will only be applied to the girl. So move the sliders while keeping this arrow button. This function or the arrow is called clipping mask, and like this, the image composition is complete. Up next, I want to talk about brushes. I want to add paintings to the image. Add a new layer at the top, and from the toolbar here, choose a brush pen. On a side note, there aren't that many brushes available at the moment. It seems that we can't really import a new brush either. But I think this will be updated soon. Anyway, grab a brush pen and we want to start drawing on this image. Regarding the brush, we can draw nicely using it since we can control the sensitivity and writing pressure of Apple Pencil. But to be honest, there is a slight delay in the brush. It's probably hard for you to tell in this video, but when I draw a smooth line, there's a lag between my pen making contact and the ink being displayed. So I feel there's a lot of work to be done compared to other apps such as Procreate, where lag times are minimal.
On a side note, when you have your brush selected, the small circle or touch shortcut at the bottom left switches to eraser. So if you want to remove something, trace the image while long tapping the touch shortcut to do so. For coloring, there is a coloring button on the tool panel here, so select it and just touch the area to color. This is super easy. Alright, just like this, we are done! In case you want to trim the image, there is a trimming function on the toolbar on the left, so you could cut in squares and export as well. Let's move on to the next image. I want to introduce you to the retouch tool using this image. The retouch tool is located here right below the bucket icon, and this helps remove anything you don't need in an image, like the almonds here for example. So this eliminates any junk, wrinkles, and small objects like almonds just by tracing. Let me see if I can remove these. I'm not sure how these would turn out. It didn't go too well this time, but you can remove these small elements properly when you do it right. Just as another example, you could also remove these lemons by tracing them. As you can see, they erase easily. Even if parts of an element are not completely erased, you can retrace and re-erase them. So there you go, that was the retouch tool for removing small objects in the image. By the way, I tried to erase some food on the wooden plate too, but with the textures being jumbled up, the end result didn't turn out well. It can be done nicely using a desktop version, but it seems that the iPad version still requires more development. But anyway, retouch tool comes in handy when erasing small objects. I highly suggest using them for stains, wrinkles, and junk. Next, I want to introduce you to the copy tool. It shows up when you long tap the retouch tool. About the copy tool, it's something that helps you copy the same image selected. I'll show you what I mean here. For instance, let's say I want to copy this almond. Click on the almond while long tapping touch shortcut. And as you trace the image you wish to reproduce, the same almond shows up. This is what the copy tool does. Like we did before, when you want to copy this pumpkin here, you could duplicate the same pumpkin as much as you want even though you probably want to trace the edges better. When you want to change the color properties of image, use an adjustment layer. Long tap the plus button here so that the adjustment layer shows up. So select it and you could do things like adjusting brightness, tone, and saturation from here. Unfortunately, we have this thing called level adjustment or correction when adjusting brightness. Even though we usually have a tone curve panel for controlling brightness, it's not available on the iPad. I'm hoping this will be updated soon, so let's look forward to it. When you want to adjust hue and saturation, move the sliders towards the right on the hue or saturation panels to make it look more vivid. This is the adjustment layer. And find this a must when compositing images, so for those who are beginners, please remember this adjustment layer. Okay, in the last image, I want to talk about black and white composition. Long tap the plus button here, select an adjustment layer, and there's a black and white edits button, so tap it to turn it black and white. There are a few sliders at the bottom right here. 
For instance, when you move the slider for red towards the right and the left, the red parts of an original image brighten or darken. The same for yellow. You can adjust how dark you want the yellow parts of an original image to be here. Just like this, I completed the image in black and white, but if you are going to color only the fox and the guy, you could do so using the clipping mask, as mentioned earlier. With the clipping mask selected, grab a brush. The brush color is black. So with this black brush chosen, trace this fox to have it color again. The brush I'm using right now is a soft brush. I use a brush with blurring edges so that the border gets blurred nicely, and it will look as only the fox is colored. Before we end, I'm going to introduce you to the text tool. The text tool can be found as the third button labeled with a T when you come from the bottom. Tap it and touch anywhere on the screen. A keyboard will show up and you may enter text. When changing the font size, there is a slider on the right panel so you could change it here, but you won't change just by moving the slider. You have to choose the selection area and move the slider to change the font size as well as the color. Unfortunately, there are no panels available to alter the spacing between the lines and letters. The spacing between the lines refers to the area between the first and the second lines. The spacing between the letters refers to the space between each letter. Not having this function can be hampering, especially for designers, so I'm hoping they'll improve upon this soon. I don't think it looks good as a design by adding a new line this time, so I'm going to make it one line and place in the middle. Oh, speaking of which, we still don't have a grid when placing text in the middle so we can't really know where exactly is the center, but it may be helpful to refer to the bar you have on the docks here on your iPad itself to rapidly find the center. I'm hoping to have a grid display function soon as well. Alright, like this, it's complete. I wanted to do work on it more to make it look more stylish design, but with the current Photoshop for iPads, we can only do simple image composition like this. I recommend using Affinity Photo for those who want to do more, but it's challenging so I wouldn't suggest it for beginners. I teach how to use Affinity Photo in my iPad Mates group, so feel free to check it out if you're interested. I will also upload more videos introducing you to Affinity Photo. Despite my complaints I made today on Photoshop for iPads, I believe it will be updated soon. Since it's a tool by Adobe, it will eventually be possible to link to other apps such as Illustrator and the Premiere Pro film editing software. So even though it's still in the stage of developing, I'm sure it's worth learning how to use Photoshop for iPad for now. So watch this video again and again to master the app. Okay, that's all for today. If you found this video useful, please give a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. Thank you for watching my video. Bye bye.